such an exciting show. It's a little unruly, if you will. <laughs> Get it? Get it? Got it? All right. Well, we're featuring today this amazing Captain America premium format figure. Then we will be talking about the Iron Studios DC mini figures that are the mini hero collectibles. Uh, then we have our very special guest, Tracy Tubera, who is here to talk about his unruly designer toys. I'm so excited to interview him. I don't know if you guys have seen uh, those three, Wade, T'Challa, and Miles. They went up for pre-order last week, and they are amazing. So we'll be talking to Tracy a little bit later. There will be a live Q&A with him, so be sure to send all of your questions over to Buffy, who is in the chats, and she will shoot them over to me, and then we can ask Tracy anything you want to know. Tracy's awesome. So we also have a new Kid Sideshow Challenge and a really awesome slideshow of the Batman Kid Sideshow Challenge from last week. So with all of that happening, we might as well just start getting to it, right? Let's do this. Let's do this, guys. So we have a featured collector this week, and his name is Michael Tuveri. Michael Tuveri, let's take a look at your collection. <gasps> oh no, Michael! <laughs> Sam forgot to put your collection in our video to pull up. Maybe we can come right into the show. Yeah, so maybe we'll come back to it at the end of the show. Thank you so much, though, Michael, for sharing your collection with us. You still will have a feature in the blog that will be released later. Um, thank you again. If you would like to be our next featured collector, head on over to side.show slash blog and click the apply now button. Um, and we'll show Michael's collection a little bit later in the show. Thank you. I can't wait to see what you have. Everyone's collection is always so amazing. So with that, it's time for our first video break. So we will have a video break and when we come back, we will talk, be talking about Cap and a couple of the other premium format figures in the background. You're watching Sideshow Live. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Sideshow Live. That was an awesome out of the box video featuring this Captain America premium format figure that I'm showing you right here, right now. So this is him. Ooh, ooh, look at that close up shot. Man, the colors really pop. So this is the Captain America premium format figure. You can see him right here. He is on a shield helicarrier platform themed base. See, look, there's the shield logo right there. Um, you can see the Ultron Sentry hand. Uh, that has been disconnected from his body, showing that at least this Ultron has been defeated. So um, you can take a look at, look at how these colors pop on him. This is kind of a, a nod to the classic Captain America outfit. Class, that's definitely the classic shield, but mostly you can see that there are armored elements that um, we were able to put in in the sculpt. This. Showed right, showed, shown right here is the exclusive swap out hand featuring the Ultron Sentry head, um, which is still available if you head on over to side.show slash capf. That's side.show slash capf. If you would like the collector's edition, that's just a normal uh, cap fist because you know, cap can punch his way out anything. So there you go. This was done by sculptor Daniel Bell and he actually is kind of part of a whole Avengers collection. As you can see right here behind me, there's the Black Widow. There we go. Um, the Black Widow is 
also on a shield helicarrier platform themed base. It's a proximity base to Captain America, which means they don't actually go together or they don't actually connect, but they do go together in a collection theme. She's also standing on a defeated Ultron Sentry as well. Black Widow is still available in the collector edition form, um, but not on the, uh, her exclusive is sold out. So also Daniel Bell did this amazing Thor behind me as well that you can see this is the Thor Breaker of Brimstone premium format figure. Let me do one of these and get out of the way so you can see how beautiful that piece is that features a, um, a posed cape by Tim Hansen. Him oh, Tim didn't pose that? I thought Tim posed that. Did you pose that? I did. Aw, so that is a pro Jeff the Producer posed cape right there. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it is a mixed media piece, so it has a fabric. Well, they're all mixed media pieces, but this one has a fabric element. So now I'm back. Um, that is what we have right here. Again, Cap, who is our feature. We just happen to have the other two on set to be able to show you as well. He is 21 inches tall. He is all sculpt. And again, his exclusive is this Ultron Sentry swap out hand. Head on over to side.show slash catpf, and he is actually in stock and shipping right now, so you could have him in your collection as soon as, you know, later this week if you're in the U.S. and pick your shipping options. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, if you really wanted it that badly that you needed to <laughs> overnight it right now. So there you go. Uh, we are coming up on another break, and when we come back, we have the Iron Studios Mini Hero Collectibles from D.C. You're watching Sideshow Live. We'll be right back. Hey everyone, welcome to another Sideshow Unboxing. Today we will be unboxing the Harley Quinn premium format figure. She's the latest to start shipping from our DC premium format figure collection. So let's just get her out of the box. First off, she has this really awesome base. I recommend holding it from right under here because there are a lot of little pieces um, from all of Harley's fun explosions that uh, could potentially break off and you don't want that when you're unboxing a figure. Um, next, we're going to grab Harley very steadily by her body. She comes in one piece and you're going to want to go at um, her at a little bit of an angle with the key in. So there you go right there. Next, she comes with two portraits, one unmasked and one masked. So let's start off with the unmasked portrait just right there like that. Um, her baton goes into, let's turn this around, goes into her belt loop like that. And then we have her famous mallet, which is super detailed and has Bud and Lou engraved on it. I don't know if you can see that right here. It says Bud and Lou. So you can see that her hands both have magnets, so you're just gonna want to key in and be careful and aware of where the magnets are because they will pull right into her wrists and they fit like that. Next we have her masked portrait, so I'm gonna go ahead and swap that out really quick. The collector's edition does come with both portraits, so you will be able to choose how you display your Harley. And then finally, her exclusive is this bat in the box figure. It comes with that right here, I can hold it up. There you go, a little bat in the box figure. And there you have it. This is the Harley Quinn premium format figure, the latest in our DC premium format figure collectible line. You are watching Sideshow, and thank you for watching another unboxing with us. Hey everyone, welcome back to Sideshow Live. We now have our featured collector, Michael. <laughs> Here we go, Michael Tuberi. Congratulations on being our feature collector. Definitely a round of applause. So look at that. He's got Yoda's hut. Oh, he does have Yoda's hut. Oh, I like that. I like that Yoda's hut diorama. That was a really cool feature and very Star Wars a uh, Predator. Sorry. And is that an alien next to the Predator? Well, you'll see in the full gallery on our blog when that is released. Again, if you would like to be the next featured collector, head on over to side.show slash blog and click the apply now button. And thank you again, Michael, not only for giving us uh, access to your collection visually, but also for your patience on us showing your collection on the show because that is part of the featured collector benefits. You get featured on the show, you get featured in the blog. So thank you, Michael. 
Now, without further ado, here are the Iron Studios DC Mini Hero Collectible Collection. These guys are pretty adorable when you take a look at them. So they eat, okay, that's Cyborg Mini, so I'll try and keep it with, with their um, short link at the bottom. They're all available right now on our website, so when you see the character that you like, your favorite Justice League character, you can go ahead and um, pre-order him at the short link that is there. They're all approximately 5.5 inches tall and um, they're all made of PVC. So they are very detailed as you can see, cause you can get that kind of detail in smaller um, figures like this. So that's the Wonder Woman. That is such a great facial expression. She looks so powerful. And here's Aquaman who has his signature trident and his very, very intense Momoa-esque facial expression. You can see right there. I love the, the details on the trident and in his eyebrows. And there's the flash. I like that they decided to go, sorry. Oh, it's because he's running, so he's a little bit, there you go. Um, I like that they decided to go with a little bit more of a glossy look with the flash so you can get the motion in him. There we go, that's a, and you can see all of his, um, what, is, what is it called? The speed Force? Speed Force, thank you. I was like, I, I don't, I watch a little bit of the Flash show, but mostly um, I don't know a whole lot about the Flash other than he's the fastest man alive, to be honest. I was way more of a, a Trinity, Batman, Wonder Woman, Superman type gal. But yeah, these guys are all fantastic and you can head on over to their, it's really the character and then mini. So it's side.show slash Superman mini, side.show slash cyborg mini, side.show slash flash mini. You don't have to put them back up, Sam. Thank you though. <laughs> Um, side.show slash Aquaman mini and side.show slash Wonder Woman mini. I know I'm going way too fast for you right there. But like I said, these guys are all part of the Iron Studios mini hero collectible collection. So you can see them there. There's also a whole bunch more. So if this is kind of like your style and the kind of collectibles that you enjoy, you're definitely going to want to pick some of these guys up because they're, they're really cool. And uh, picking up Cyborg here, I noticed when we were placing them on set, they're a lot more, you know, detailed and like weighty than I thought they were gonna be. I thought they were gonna be like a light type of like plastic-esque thing, but they're not. They're very, they're definitely collectible would be the right word for them. They're, they're detailed, they're heftier than I expected, especially for a 5.5 inch little mini figure. And like I said, I, I like the cyborg because you can see all the little mechanical details on him. I'm trying to hold him like this long enough for, yeah, there we go. But look at all the little mechanical details on him. It's pretty great. And they all come with Justice League themed bases so you can put them all together. But look at the back of that helmet and like his cybernetic body. It's pretty great. So with that, I'm gonna pull up my notes here because you guys know what time it is. Show challenge. Last week we had a Batman challenge for Batman week and we got a lot of entries for this cobbled cosplay with Batman characters. So we're just going to go ahead and slide right into the slideshow. These are so sweet. So the whole concept behind cobbled cosplay is you can only use found items in your home or office in order to put together a cosplay. There are no costume elements or items allowed. You can even use food. Uh, because that I heard was ketchup on his face and this one <laughs> is pretty epic as well I actually didn't realize there was like a person in there <laughs> and this was one of my personal uh, favorites when I saw this one being posted so there you guys go but look and this one is so good that even Groot decided to join in as well so oh man and this one took me a second because I was like who is he supposed to be calendar man you guys, that's so clever. I'm, I'm so impressed with these kids' side show challenges every week. You guys keep up the good work. But unfortunately, there's only one prize and only one person could be declared the winner. And so the winner of the Batman premium format figure, AKA the first premium format figure that has been given away in the kids' side show challenge is Ivan V from Phoenix, Arizona. Wow, congratulations, Ivan. That is fantastic. So, 
Who? That's really cool. So um, this week we have a new Kid Sideshow challenge that was too kind of like too big to kind of lug over here because um, it wasn't a part of the set. So we have Sam, the Mumra statue. Wow, what a cool detailed piece to be able to give away in a Kid Sideshow challenge. So head on over to side.show slash l y k s s like let your kid sideshow get it l y k s s mumra. And that will give you a link to the Gleam contest where you can enter for your chance to win. There are 28 ways to enter and they have one to 50 entries each. And that's doing things like join the Let Your Geek Side Show Facebook group, liking us on various platforms like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, things like that, or listening to our podcast. All these things are ways to get some, some smaller uh, amount of entries. However, if you would like to just blow blow it us out of the water and be featured possibly in the slideshow next week. Um, the Let Your Kids Sideshow Challenge this week is a cobbled cosplay of any Thundercat character. So any Thundercats character that you can think of that you want to put together a cobbled cosplay for, that means it has to be done with found items in your home or office so you can't just put together like, you can't just put on like an actual Chitara costume. You have to like, paint yourself with possibly mustard. I don't know, I don't know, that, that could work. But um, yeah, that's what I mean. But that is so much fun. So these are each worth 1,000 entries. That was the lamest drum roll ever, but it was, it's actually cool because it's like 1,000 entries per post per platform. So let's say you put together a Panthera costume uh, with things that you found around your house, then you can post it on Facebook that is a thousand entries. You post it on Instagram, that's another thousand entries. And then Twitter to round out for up to 3,000 bonus entries on this Let Your Kids Sideshow challenge. Now here's the thing, you guys. You have to leave your posts up because if you put up the post and then take it down, those entries are then forfeit. Your bonus entries are deleted. You have to leave it up at least until next week's show. So. That has become a problem because it kind of messes with the bonus entries. So please, please, please leave up those posts of the cobbled cosplays in order to get credit. If you delete them beforehand, I'm sorry, but those entries are forfeit. We need to be able to see your cobbled cosplay and uh, Buffy can't see it if you take down the post because then the picture doesn't exist anymore. So again, I am really looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with, especially if you guys decide to do Mumra. That would be a really awesome cobbled cosplay. But you know, I'm, I, I think, yeah, look at that. That'd be really cool to do. So any, um, I was like, any Panthera, any Thundercats character <laughs> uh, from found objects in your home or office and get up to 3000 bonus entries in the Kids Side Show Challenge. So. Head on over to side.show slash L-Y-K-S-S Mumra and see all the different ways you can enter this week's challenge. Now, we have one more video break for you and then we are gonna get Unruly up in here. Tracy Tabera is here and we have an interview with him coming up next. You're watching Sideshow Live. Designer toys are an expansion of any character. They're pushing the boundaries of realism. Cohesive in its incohesiveness. I had a burp, sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> I think the fact that Sideshow is creating this new designer toy company, you're gonna have all the quality that you'd get from a Sideshow piece now in a designer toy. New characters, old characters. We're not saying no to any ideas. Licensed characters, unlicensed characters. We're working with the artists who created this art that we appreciated or we fell in love with. When they told me like they wanted to work with me, like I, I think I couldn't say yes fast enough. <laughs> we want to stay true to their visions and be a platform for the artists and what they're doing. One of the most important aspects of Unruly Industries is retaining the artist's original voice and intention for these pieces. This goes back to like what's so great about designer toys and how designer toys are whatever your imagination can think of, and it becomes that toy. All my artwork has always been reflective of like indigenous cultures. So like I think it's just something about that always wants to come out. 
I was on a podcast a while back with Mark Bricky, the Adventures in Design, but he was like, dude, everything you do looks like it could kill you, but it's also like super cool, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> I do sugar skulls. It's kind of an infusion of kind of my two cultures, kind of Mexican and American. So many of what I do is just stuff that I love. I don't know how to like convey how excited I am about this project because I think it's just gonna be bonkers off the wall, brilliant. The designer toy market is so broad and so vast. I think it fosters that kind of environment where you want to tackle these original pieces and give those artists a chance to grow. Hello everyone and welcome back to Sideshow Live. So today's guest is a little bit unruly. Yeah, so please welcome to the studio, Tracy Tubera. Hi, Tracy. Hey, what's going on? Tracy, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Good, I'm great. So um, for you guys out there watching, a little intro to Tracy here. Tracy is an illustrator and a designer. Uh, he does stylized versions of pop culture characters as well as some of his own. Uh, but lately he's been working in the designer toys as part of our unruly industries. So Tracy, I have to start out by asking you like the most important question. Yes, what yeah. is that? Why are you so awesome? I see you totally caught me off guard. I thought it was going to be some other questions. I, I don't know if I'm awesome. No, you're totally awesome. I like to think I'm awesome. You're very awesome. My mom says I'm awesome, so I've just gone with well, it my whole life. Well, if your mom says it, it has to be it true. It has to be true. Um, but thank yeah. you. I appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> so, um, no, but like really, where did you get started um, with all your awesome? I have no idea. I just remember this story. My mom always used to tell me that I used to draw. I learned how to draw before I learned how to write. Which probably explains my grades. <laughs> you guys don't have a room shot here. No, um, we need we need someone need on yeah. drums. Jeff, um, can you get make that happen? Yeah. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> um, yeah, I just started doing that, and then I loved comic books growing up. So obviously, comic books had a huge influence in my art, yes. and um, I had that dream one time to be a comic book artist. Then I realized you had to draw like twenty plus pages and backgrounds. I was like, ah, oh, that's not happening. So, <laughs> <laughs> so then I went like, I thought I'd do cartoons stuff like that, and then. I just fell into toys. It was a weird thing. I was designing skateboard decks, t-shirt graphics, anything and everything you could think of, and then I fell into toys. That's Even though I collected toys my whole life, I just never thought I'd be like a toy designer. Well, what do you collect? It's like a nice follow-up. Oh, it's a nice, nice yeah, segue. I know. <laughs> uh, besides comic books, I collect sneakers, obviously. Yes. 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 Um, um, comic books, sneakers, toys. Uh, kids, I guess you can say, because I have triplet boys, so I just like <laughs> collecting them in multiples. I don't know, but. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not a hoarder though, but I do like to collect stuff. That's what we all tell ourselves. It's exactly. like a mantra. I'm not a hoarder, but I do like to collect stuff. <laughs> exactly. It's like a thing. So, um, so what, I mean, your style is so unique. You have kind of like a graffiti urban thing that has very clear lines though, but also very bright comic book colors. So how did you come up with that sort of blend of everything? There's also like a little bit of anime thrown in there in some, in some, yeah. instances it, it literally was everything i grew up with so like my older friends uh shout out to cheeto and roman my old, like two guys who are like my older brothers they were all into graffiti loved their art so then it was one of those things where like they introduced me to, to graffiti and that mixed in with my love for comic books and then also anime just all of a sudden just blended the style together and i just love like sharp angles and then the pop primary colors that definitely comes from comic books like yeah. i grew up on the silver age of comic books so like i love like seeing bright reds, blues, and then even like Jack Kirby was a huge like, influence on me. So oh, yeah. a lot of my illustration has a lot of solid black shadows and solid black lines, um, which also you do see in graffiti. So it was one right. of those weird things where I always felt as if there was always that uh, that connection between the two. There was always that uh, like a merger, a merge, merger, That's merger. Like it's like a mashup. Mashup, mashup. Even better. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. Or like a remix if you want to get like a little bit more <laughs> urban to it, right? Yeah. Yes. I'm cool. Hey, hey, Shut cool. up, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff's like making this face at me like you are cool. so not cool. <laughs> <laughs> you have never been cool. No, it's fine. Um, so how did you get recruited to Unruly? Oh, that was a great story. So I always participate in a show called Designer Con. I love Designer Con. I love Designer it's Con too. It's so great. Shout out to Designer yeah, Con. Yeah, Designer Con's amazing. Yes. If you guys have the chance to go to it, please do. If you ever want to go to a great uh, convention where it's all about the art, the artists, and artists you've probably never heard of, 
and artists that you have heard of, that's a great spot. Sorry, shameless plug. No, but, um, it's, it's not. It's yeah. It's, um, le it's a legit show. It's fantastic. It's going to be in Anaheim this year. I think it was Anaheim last year, so it'll be again back yeah, in yeah. Anaheim. Um, but I was at DesignerCon, had my booth, and I believe it was two years ago, and it was Sunday, so Sundays tend to be a little bit slower. Mm -hmm. No, one, Nothing was really happening. And then in walks in a, a, a man, a fine gentleman, walks in, starts asking me all these questions about my art, asking me about like designer toys. And then at the end of the conversation, he's like, yeah, we should get together and talk some more. And then he hands me his card, and it was Greg. Uh, <laughs> CEO of the side show. And I'm like, I saw, once I saw the card and I saw the logo, I was like, holy crap. <laughs> You've taken a lot of money from me over the years. Oh my like, God. We will definitely talk. Yeah, that's I amazing. A lot of stuff through Sidewalk. That's like an show. excellent story to get recruited. Like, yeah. if you're going to get recruited, it might as well be by Greg. Exactly. So, and he was super cool. Uh, he told me to come in. So I came in, I met with everybody, I met with Anna and Eric, and then they explained to me that they wanted to start, like, they have a love for designer toys mm -hmm. and they wanted to start a sub brand uh, through Sideshow. And being a fan of Sideshow and knowing all of the the intricate designs and the awesome craftsmanship that goes into every Sideshow piece, yeah. I got super excited because knowing that could translate into designer toys, I just knew that the possibilities you know, were endless. So That's amazing. That's how it started. That's so cool. Yeah. So you, Shout out to Greg. Nice I know, shout right? Yeah. Shout out to Greg. That's amazing. <laughs> um, wow. What What's funny is I actually met you, I realized, at DesignerCon because you had a series of Stranger Things pins. Oh, yeah. And I got one from you, like, at DesignerCon, but I didn't realize that until I was, like, stalking your Instagram after we were doing Unruly <laughs> stuff. And I was, like, I was like, oh, my God, I totally met him at yeah. DesignerCon, like, whenever he did these pins because I totally bought the Dustin one from, awesome. from you. Yeah, I know. it was. It, those are really cool pins. It's again yeah. at DesignerCon. I know. At DesignerCon, you, you get, like, face-to-face. -face, yeah. You find, like, these cool artists and... The, the Stranger Things pins are, again, like really awesome stylized versions of the Stranger Things characters. And that's, thank you. that's so much fun. So thank very you, cool. Um, wow. So <laughs> tell us a little bit now that we're talking unruly about yes. T'Challa, Wade, and Miles. Like what made you choose these three and how did you come up with your version of them? Uh, the reason why I picked these three, I, I think it just happened to be one of those things where Black Panther just come out and I love that movie. So it was one of those things where, admittedly, I wasn't, I was never really a huge Black Panther fan, but after watching the movie, I just, I just love, I love that character. So I had to do an illustration of that character, um, and then also since you know it was a Jack Kirby creation, oh yeah, I think what most people don't realize about this little pose, it's almost like an homage to one of his covers that he did of Black Panther, where Black Panther's, I forgot what the issue. But he's it is. he's a little bit more blue in the Kirby cover. Yeah, but yeah. it's just the pose uh -huh. where he's jumping out. Yeah. And I kinda want to do my version of that where you know Black Panther is like this this character where you want to get that kind of Panther type oh, yeah. pose to him. So uh, that's where I came up with him. I was like I had to draw an illustration of him and wanted that pose to make it look like he was pouncing on somebody. That's amazing. Um, I'm trying to just show Black Panther while you talk about it. And orange, yeah, yeah. Um, and then coming up with a Wade, it's just because it's Deadpool. It's like, yeah. you know, he's just a fun character in general. Shout out to Rob Liefeld. Um, <laughs> I like his socks. Yeah. That, I don't know why that's my favorite part of the Deadpool, of, of Wade, because, um, you know, the costume is pretty standard. Like, yes. you, you always see this and you know that it's it's Deadpool or it's Wade Wilson. But the socks to me were just like, of course he has, like, the pulled up high, like, gym socks. Of course he does. Exactly. I mean, nothing <laughs> says badass like tube socks. Yeah. Totally. You know, <laughs> shout out to Club Lang. Two socks and shoot tea. That might be too old for some people. But uh, I had to do, you know, I had yeah. to do uh, Wade. And of course, you know, nothing says, you know, mercenary like the finger guns. Oh, yeah. He, pew, pew, pew. Pew, pew. <laughs> He's like, I got tube socks, y'all. Yeah. I wanted the wrist to articulate so you could do, like, you know, normal, and then you could do gangster. But, you know. Oh, oh yeah. See, I, I saw but the, also, please don't yeah. do that to your figures when you got, get it's, them. Yeah, they're not posable. They're not they're posable. Don't These do that. are designer toys. The hands might break off. Yeah. And then, yeah. But maybe a variant someday. Yeah, maybe. Uh, and then come up with Miles just because I love Miles Morales, that character. So um, fantastic. I'm, 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 because I'm a huge comic book fan, I love legacy type characters. Oh, yeah. And I love legacy characters that make sense. Oh, yeah. Not only are they taking the mantle from the older character, but they are their own character themselves. And they... In, in the world that we've created, like the evolution of the Spider-Verse, he yes. was the person to take up 
the mantle of Spider-Man. Exactly. Exactly. And then, of course, the movie comes out, and, like, I just loved... That, that movie blew my mind. I know. That it movie was so brilliant. I mean... Yeah. Yeah. When the shoes came out, ah, I had to get them. Ah, ah, sneaker ah, twins. A sneaker twins. Oh, oh, like, yeah. <laughs> sneaker twins. There you go. Careful with them. No, I was like, oh, I watch everyone go. <laughs> they are putting their feet next to prototypes in this room. This? Oh my this? god. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they are yours. So. Uh, uh. We didn't say the segment's unruly. So. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. did. The segment is unruly, <laughs> and we've never done a foot five on this show before. So. First for everything. Yes, there's a first for everything that just happened wow yeah so the movie comes out and like it blows my mind i loved how he was wearing jordans in the actual movie um obviously the toys can't be wearing officially licensed sneakers but they're wearing tracy tabara because that's your logo on the yeah. back of them that's what that's you'll notice with all these stories like my logo the double t logo yeah, will be the double placed t. branded on the sneakers as, yeah. as if that was like the sneakers branding um but i did you know obviously sneakers that paid homage to other sneakers that exist. Yeah, because that's not, yeah, these are like what, Jordan? Those are Jordan Jordan fours. fours. Yeah, I was like, see, you're there, you're close, you're close, you're there, you're (laughs) there. It's like, they're either threes or fours, I can't tell. (laughs) Anyway. (laughs) Um, Yeah, and then I want to do Miles and, you know, Spider Man. Spider Man's always in motion. Mm -hmm. So I I came up with this pose where it looked as if like he was pushing back and his clothes and the wind were all going the opposite direction. That's what I just. I loved it because it's like the classic Spider-Man landing pose, but then there's like a twist because Miles obviously has other layers on because he always does. Like, it's, you did such, it's so amazing. Thank you. It's cool. And the little thing also too for the sneakers, since, you know, can't have branding, but I I come from a customizing background Mm -hmm. when I got into designer toys. Mm -hmm. Left certain areas blank, so in case you wanted to paint something in, like a logo or whatnot, (laughs) you can do it yourself. I'm not saying what logo. And we're not saying that you should do that. Not saying you should, but mm-hmm. if you're into customizing. Mm-hmm. Well, you <laughs> could if you want. Work the piece be returned. When yeah, you after you do picture. that, though, you can't, you yeah, can't uh, call us you for return policy. No returns. Yeah, you're like, you mess this one up. <laughs> Use pencil first, then paint it. Oh, my gosh. Um, so what inspires you? Um, everything, you know, comic books, cartoons, anime, my kids now because like I'm how old li- are they they are six and i three six-year-old boys three six-year-old boys they're nuts and i'm raising them to be super nerds yes so i think even at three or four they knew everything about star wars which is pretty crazy and then now they know everything about comic books mm-hmm. i mean if i wasn't into chemistry and math they would probably be geniuses <laughs> which they are i'm not saying they're not you know they're very smart it's but a different kind of knowledge exactly yeah so they're very they have a vast knowledge of pop culture that's amazing um so it's funny when i was designing these toys they knew exactly who they were right so it was pretty cool i love that my yeah. four-year-old niece knows the difference between miles morales spider gwen like she um spider Han- like she knows spider-man noir peter parker yeah. she, like she knows all the different spider-mans and she hasn't even seen into the spider-verse she that's just great. and she knows the different symbiotes like she knows oh, wow. the difference between venom and carnage and like where they came from and stuff and i'm like you're amazing. <laughs> That's like another grade level. Yeah, no, I know. It's like yeah. she's learned all this stuff about <laughs> just the Spider Verse, and she just casually wears Spider Man outfits all the time. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And I tested her because I was like, "Who's this?" I showed her a picture on Facetime, and she was like, "Um, Aunt Susan, that's Miles Morales." And I'm like, "You're yeah. right. You're right." Her yeah. parents are doing her well, mm-hmm. preparing mm-hmm. her for the world. Yep. <laughs> so, um, what comic books do you collect? Oh, jeez, I am. Admittedly, I'm more of the, the big two guys. Yeah. So a lot of Marvel and DC stuff, some independent stuff. Um, but I think right now, like probably the I've been doing a lot of, just because of the digital comics. Mm-hmm. I've been able to go back to get like older comics that I've never like been able to get. Do you have a subscription to Marvel Unlimited? Not Marvel Unlimited. Okay. And, or DC, which is dumb because I keep uh-huh. I'm just paying. I, like, yeah. I should just do the unlimited thing. But, I yeah. have the unlimited, and I love going back and reading all of them because then I also don't have to worry about like, oh, but I bought this really old comic book and now I can't touch it. Exactly. Like, yeah. The, the oils will decay the comic book, so now you can just be like, all right, I get to read all these like old Journey into Mysteries and old Strange Tales. Exactly. And, yeah. And now that I've become older, I realize you know I need less stuff. So I have like 15 long boxes like sitting in storage. I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to go through these and like, you know, get rid of some. Uh, I don't envy you at all. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, I did a purge a few years back because uh, it was the same thing, like 15, between 15 and 20 long boxes. It yeah. Like, I, so now I'm down to two stacks of short boxes, but. That's great. You know. And yeah. I keep thinking to myself, oh, I'll just give this to my sons. Like they'll inherit it. But like, you know, they already know that there's digital comics. So like they, I don't think they really want to be digging through the, the boxes. 
But that was the great thing about it when you were collecting, yeah. digging yeah. through the boxes. Yeah. You'd be like, oh, yeah. I know where this issue is. And you have like your own filing system. Exactly. And you're like, mm, mm, I love it. Um, so we have a couple of questions that are coming in from the audience. You guys out there, be sure to shoot your questions over to Buffy. She will shoot them over to me and we will ask Tracy. That's how this works. So um, there are, one is about sneakers. As a collector of sneakers, um, ask him if he has the back to the future Nike Air Mags. I do not. I, I remember when they first, uh, they actually made them. Uh -huh. Like you're familiar with their shoes, right? Uh Oh. Sort of ish. Okay. I mean, yeah. Like Back to the Future Two, Marty McFly oh. puts on the all shoes. Oh, oh, yeah. okay. I know what those are. Yeah. So, right. um, I think it was for an anniversary, but also to raise yes. awareness for the Michael J. Fox Foundation. Yeah. Nike yeah. actually made made those shoes. Oh wow. The first pair when they or the first uh, shoes that they did didn't auto lace at first, but it was all in auction. So you had you can only buy them on eBay, and it, 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 because it was basically to raise money. So that's like, amazing. Yeah, it was a great idea. It just sucked because the prices were ridiculous. That was crazy. Yeah. yeah, I bet. So I remember at one point I saw an auction going for like three grand, like three, it was between like three and four. And I was like thinking in my head, how can I convince my wife that I can spend three or four grand on shoes? And I thought about it, I was like, no, she'll divorce me. So like, I just won't do anything. But like they, ever since then, they actually made the auto lacing shoes. Yeah. So they actually have, they've made a Air Mags or Nike Mags that auto lace. But again, they did them all for auction and for charity and like they were just ridiculous price. They, yeah. Auto lace. Yeah. Yeah. And now they're actually making new Nike shoes that auto lace by themselves for basketball. Oh my it's god. It's amazing. We're That's living amazing. in the future, people. That's so it's, I was like, well, here. I need some it's auto here. lacing shoes because I hate tying my shoes. Fifteen? Yeah, it's twenty fifteen. Yeah. It's twenty fifteen, guys. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're living in the future <laughs> past. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're, we're here. We've made it. <laughs> yeah, because I also know that Reebok did the Ripley shoes too, for real. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. uh my tattoo artist has a has a pair. Oh wow. Because he has like a huge alien collection and I don't remember how he said he got them, but it's in his like, like he has all these like he actually has a bunch of sideshow alien statues and like the Reebok Ripley like pair in the middle and I'm like, Ugh, that's so cool. I'm gonna steal them because they're actually my size, not his. So I was like, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna take those. See, that's someday. a good collector when he buys it. That's not his size. Yeah, because he was like, well, I'm not gonna wear them. He, yeah, yeah, he was like, I just want to display them. Yeah. I'm gonna wear them and I looked and I was like. Those are my size, so and he was like, "Yeah, but now I know who stole them when they're missing." And I'm like, "Damn it!" Well, you're probably wearing them too. Was like, "Hey, yeah. what happened to your shoes?" Yeah. Oh, I'm oh yeah. Oh, and sorry. then like all, yeah. <laughs> and then I'll just put like my Converse like up there, like, "No, those are the same. They're totally the same." Um, awesome. Hey, uh, so Jamie says, "Hey Tracy, you have great style. Do you ever do comic or movie accurate designs to supplement your stylized work?" Um, I never have. I mean, I love the opportunity, but at the same time, I think uh, I just happen to love working in my own style. I mm -hmm. guess that's a weird like artist thing that you always like to work in your style type of thing. But yeah. um, I mean, if the opportunity was there, I would take it. Yeah. So shout out to all the studios. <laughs> <laughs> Want to hire me? Is that the camera? Is that the camera? That's the camera. They're all the cameras. <gasps> oh, oh all gosh, the cameras. They're it, all looking it. at you right now. What? What? Hi. Um, are you a Batman fan? Yes. I mean, obviously I love Marvel. I love all the, the, you know, Marvel and DC. I happen to be a big, I'm particularly, I'm a Batman and Robin fan. Interesting. Because growing up, my favorite character was Dick Grayson. Because obviously, you know, when they created Robin, it was one of those things where you, they wanted a younger character for the, long, the younger kids to look up to mm -hmm. and to like, you know, relate to. I loved Batman, but I was not an adult. Mm -hmm. I was, I loved Dick Grayson because he was a kid living the same adventure as Batman. Um, so I'm you picked. follow him through Nightwing too? Oh yes. I was gonna say I want Nightwing like this. My <laughs> yeah. my goal eventually, obviously, <laughs> I, like, to I do, totally want a Nightwing like this. My goal eventually, obviously, because I love Marvel, I love DC, mm -hmm. is I would eventually love to do a Nightwing. I want to actually do uh, a Nightwing, Red Hood, and uh, Red Robin, because <gasps> nice. my triple boys are named Grayson, Jace, and Blake, because I named them after Dick Grayson, Jason Todd, and Tim Drake. And their middle names, because I love the Teen Titans, George Perez, Marv Wolfman run. Yeah. It's Grayson Stone, or Victor Stone, uh, and then Jace Connor, although that's Connor Kent, but I still love Superboy. Yeah. And then uh, Blake Logan for Garfield Logan. So I tricked my wife, slightly tricked her. I told her the names, and she goes, oh, the na those names are great. She's like, where'd you come up with them? And it was because my friend Cheeto and I, one day we're sitting around, he's like, you should name your kids combo characters because you're a dork. And he's like, you should yeah. name your first kid Nightwing. I was like, my wife is never going to allow oh, that. Nightwing. <laughs> name <laughs> your kid Nightwing. Yeah, Nightwing, well, Superboy. Like, so that's, that's never going to happen. That's like that joke where you're supposed to name your child Gotham. So, so, that, 
So that way, well, the wife is supposed to say like, God, that needs you whenever oh. they're crying in the middle of the night. So that way you get up instead of, oh. yeah. Gotham's calling, I need to get yeah. actually pretty good. Yeah, um, Gotham needs you. But yeah, when she heard the name, she loved it. But at first it was supposed to be a Drake instead of Blake. Oh. But then she was worried it was gonna be too much like, everyone's like, oh, you named him after the rapper. Drake, oh, yeah. yeah. So then I was like, all right, she said, she said Blake. And I was like, oh, that's a great compromise. Mm -hmm. And then plus, The Dark Knight Rises came out. Yeah. And there was John Blake, who obviously was supposed to be Robin right. anyway. So. Uh-huh. That's Worked out. That's so I have my little Robin, so. Aww. But it's that, uh, that but Red uh, Robin like this would be awesome, too. I love Tim Drake. Tim Drake's my favorite of the Robins. I love Tim Red Drake. Robin. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And like, uh, what was that, that Q-Fig, that master? I, when I saw that statue, I was like, oh my god, I almost started crying. I was like, oh, that's we us. We did the reveal on the show. And I watched when, that episode. And when he came in and took it off, Jeff and I were both like, like, we didn't have anything to say. We just, yeah. like, stared at it. And so he got a little nervous. Because we, like, both of us were just, like. It's it's a beautiful piece. Like, the concept behind it is amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I loved it. Yeah. Yeah, it's I so saw good. it. I was like, oh, I need that. I need Day that. one pre-order. Day yeah. one pre-order. I would, amazing. like, not to be mean to any, like, you know, Batgirl fans, but I'd probably take her off and put, like, a dog. Because if we have a dog. Mm. So it'd be Ace. But his name oh. isn't Ace, so, but, like. Because yeah. they, my son saw it too, and they go, "Oh, that's us, Dad!" And the minute they said that, and they knew what I was thinking, oh. I was like, "Oh, I need to get that." Yeah. Oh. See, I wanted also because Huntress was raised by Batman, also to have like a little Helena, like like just by his feet, like poking around. Like, <laughs> maybe she's not being held the same way the rest of the family yeah, is, but she's, but she's like you know, she's there because she's still part of it. They should have yeah. added like the pets, like you know, Bat Cow, oh. Ace the Hound. That would be just hilarious. That would be amazing. That's like supplementary like accessories they can yeah. add. Okay, so the point of asking you if you like Batman oh, is okay. because we have our regular question that gets asked, which oh, okay, is okay. who is your Batman? As in like actor? It doesn't no, necessarily have to be. Who is your Batman? Who is your Who is your Batman definitively? Oh geez, that's a tough one. I know. Definitive that's Batman. why we like Which that. Which is why it always gets asked. It always gets asked that's because everyone like you know, there's now eighty years of Batman, so who do you pick? That's like, a do great you pick question. A, an artist? Do you pick a writer? Do you pick a, an actor, a voice actor, a wow. puppet master? <laughs> Can I give three Batmans or do just sure. one? Top okay. three Batmans. Since you're a mega fan, oh, and geez, I don't know if I can. Do, okay, I'll, I'll say top three, but not in any order. Okay, top okay. three, so not in any order. I have to go Adam West first, just because I grew up watching yeah. Batman sixty six on syndication. I think you're the first person to actually answer Adam West, who's been he's, asked he's, this question. He's in my top. Yeah. I know, but like yeah. guest wise, guest Jeff. Wise, yes. It's just one of those weird things where like, you know, you grew up, you watch TV, you love comic books, and all of a sudden you see this Batman on TV, mm -hmm. and it was crazy just seeing a live action Batman. So that like blew my mind. And it was a living comic. Yeah. Exactly. So when you watched it. Yeah. It yeah. Oh, it was. Colorful Especially and like the punches and, and yep. it's like, bam. Yeah. And so then seeing cool. Robin also, I was like, oh my God, it's Robin. Yeah. yeah. Never understood why his underwear was so high. <laughs> it was either really high or really long. I, didn't, I couldn't understand what was going on there. And like, I knew they were trying to like, you it's know. the 60s, man. Yeah, yeah, it was really weird. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Burt Ward. Um, and Adam West. Uh, and then I guess movie wise, ah, uh, it's a tie between Keaton and Bale. Because mm -hmm. again, Keaton, first Batman movie, mm -hmm. blew my mind. I made oh, yeah. my mom take me. I remember I was, I think I was sick. Like I was deathly ill, but I had to go watch it. So we watched it. And then when Christian Bale, like, you know, the Christopher Nolan, Nolan verse came out, mm -hmm. blew my mind. Um, and then third, I'd have to go Jim Lee, Batman, the Hush series. Is Hush just Hush, Hush, yeah. yeah. The, um, Anna picked Hush. Oh, nice. Yeah. So Anna know. was a guest yesterday, and she, and she immediately was like, "Oh, Hush." And then she was like, "Was I supposed to pick an actor?" And we're like, "No." It's just like, "Who's your Batman?" And she's like, "Hush." Yeah. But don't get me wrong. Like all the other artists have done like Batman over the years. Yeah. Amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, Jim Aparo, everybody. Uh, but like the Jim Lee Hush series blew my mind. It's yeah. Like, oh it yeah. It made me fall back in love with Batman. Oh yeah. There was a while there where I stopped. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah. I love That's it. That's when Sam asked me like, what's the one Batman series? I was like, Hush. Yeah. And he was like, he was like if I was going to, no, Hush. Yeah. I don't know the rest of the question, but it's Hush. <laughs> I was so flip flop between the Hush and Long Halloween. I know you like Long yeah. Halloween. Long Halloween's great. Uh, and I like Dark yeah. Victory and I like yeah. Dark Knight Returns, yeah. but and Hush. Yeah. No, I, I, can't argue that. Yeah. Like, I always have my fingers crossed that, like, the new Matt Reeves movie will be based on Hush. But uh, I just don't know if they would yeah. ever do that. It just seems such, like, a huge task to take on. Yeah. But then we yeah. can get the whole Bat family introduced in every, one get yeah. everyone. Because everybody every, knows everything about Batman. What a great way to, like, revamp the, like, exactly. the universe yeah, also. You don't really have to, I mean... They could do you what Homecoming you did. You don't have to do the yeah. origin, but you still get history. Yeah, exactly. Story. Like Homecoming. Yeah. Homecoming, yeah. there's no origin. You already know. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. 
Um, so, Tracy, who is your all-time favorite superhero? It has to be Dick Grayson. Yes. There we go. There we go. Not um, Rick Grayson, even though it's an interesting storyline. Have, have you been reading that lately? <laughs> no. No, I haven't. After you, got, you heard how he got shot in the head? Yes. And then he got amnesia for a little bit? Yes. And then he came back, and now he thinks he's Rick Grayson? Oh. Yeah. Good. <laughs> <laughs> interesting. Yeah. Um... <laughs> So now people are, so JJ Joe wants to ask, are there any um, plans for any other lines with the sneakers? Specifically, he's asking for K2SO What's the K2? from Star Wars, from, okay. Rogue One, from Rogue One. Oh, wow. I was like, wow. Um, that, that's pretty rocking. Yeah. Because you like, could wow, put. He needs sneakers because he's got the real skinny legs. He has really like, skinny you know, legs. And you could have him like. <laughs> <laughs> you, you could have him like holding like, you know when Cassian gives him all the stuff, he's like holding like the bag and like has like a attitude about the bag and his. Sneakers. Oh yeah, 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 that'd be great. Yeah, I, I don't know what I can and cannot say about. He does have future stuff. Possibly some stuff, but he can't talk about it. Can't talk about. It. Yeah. But doing Star Wars stuff would be amazing. Yes. Other comic book characters would be amazing. Yes. Other stuff. Other stuff. Who knows? The future is vast and holds many opportunities exactly. for things. I think it'd be fun to get original art from you. If oh like yeah. To just license yeah, them. that would be awesome. Some of your like, Who if you the, his Instagram, his Instagram and his Twitter are right here at the bottom of the screen. And please give him a follow because Tracy's artwork is stunning. It's so cool. And you get to Thank see, you, yes, that. it's very, very cool. And every once in a while you see little post-its. Do you see the post -its? Yes, I love the post-its. The post-its are great. <laughs> so every once in a while I do post-its for like my, my boys. I stick them in their, lunch in their lunch bags. And they're like, I've been doing it since they were in kindergarten. So they're the coolest kids ever because they're like, look what I got with my I lunch. I think they're becoming a little bit desensitized to it because now they're like, oh, another one, Dad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, whoa. Oh, I was like, dude, relax. Kids of artists and kids of animators and all that stuff. Yeah. They just don't. They grow up with it. Yeah, like I, they get, sad. they always tend to get like a lot of free samples of toys for like my clients, and I give them to my boys. And I think in their minds, they just think dad just keeps getting us gifts. Mm -hmm. Like I don't think they realize where it's coming from. Oh my god! So I always have this funny, you know, thing that when they're teenagers, they'll probably like it'll click one day, like, oh, you got them from work. It's like, no, dad wasn't wasting all this money on toys. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Well, sort of. kind of. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, what number of Jordans are your favorite, and why? Uh, that's a tough one. I would, two of them, Jordan 1s, obviously. Jordan, like, Jordan 1s. Those are classics. Yeah. But I also love the Jordan 3s. So Jordan 1s, 3s, then the 11s, and the 4s. Okay, the 1s and the 3s. I'll go like, <laughs> I was one, like three, for me, it's the 1s. The fours, the ones, I yeah. love the 1s. The 1s the the are classic. The They're Jordan 2s were the best skate shoes I ever had. I yes. have a pair of Jordan 2s, and they're actually, Jordan 1s are my favorite design wise and like the, my favorite across the board. They're, yeah. they're the most consistent look, design. Yeah, right. But yes. uh, my Jordan 2s are, are more comfortable. I have like one, I have like a pair of Jordan 2s that are like the most comfortable shoes that I've ever owned in my life. It just, so. if you got like the older ones, like the leather was a lot mm -hmm. more like softer. Yeah. So like it was premium leather, so yeah. like it felt really comfortable. And it's funny how the two doesn't get any respect. It's no, weird. it doesn't at I mean, all. It's, it's not. It's not the best looking shoe. No, well, my mine. But yeah, the, the it the functionality of that shoe is yeah. top notch. My um mine are foam posit twos, so they oh. have like a foam like uh, on the outside, so they look really cool. They're like this ice blue around the outside, gotcha. so they look a little better than a lot of the other Jordan twos, which is why <laughs> I got them. And then it turned out that they were the most comfortable shoes I've ever worn in my life. So comfort is always I important. Know. Yeah. Um, ooh, this is aw. If you had a daughter, what would her name be? Since you named your boys after Robins. It, it was funny. Me and my wife talked about it. We think most likely it would have been Robin. Robin. Yeah. It just would have been Robin. Yeah. Aww. Like, because like obviously, if we had a fourth boy, I would lean towards Damien. Mm. But a lot of people are like, eh, Damien. I mean, well, he is a, like he's a murder so child. <laughs> yeah, exactly, like, exactly. He's a murder child. Yeah, like, eh, chip in the corner type weird type stuff. Like, yeah. Eh, uh, yeah. League of Shadows. Yeah. <laughs> so we always thought if we had a fourth child, son, or daughter, it would have been Robin. And then if it was Because actually was Robin is a, is a unisex yeah. name, yeah. so you could name it. Boy, girl names are so yeah. weird. Yeah. Tracy. Actually, a lot of, I mean, even Blake is... Could be, yeah. 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 I've actually, I think we've actually met a, uh, a girl named Grayson. Oh, that... Which is interesting. Yeah, never, yeah. A girl named... Like name. a little girl named Grayson. I was like, oh, interesting. There's that voice actress whose name is Gray. Yeah. 
and then also Blake Lively. So there you go. There you go. Anyway, um, yeah, blah blah blah. Oh, what type of music do you listen to while you work? Um, whatever, whatever, like hip hop, punk, rock. Um, it's so funny because I just introduced my sons into uh, to Journey because I'm a huge <laughs> Journey fan. So like. <laughs> One day, like, I forgot I had a CD in my truck, and mm -hmm. then we were just listening to it, and they're like, Dad, what song is that? And I, I was like, it's a band called Journey, and the song is Separate Ways. Mm -hmm. So, like, they just constantly, for, like, weeks, just want me to play Journey Separate Ways, <laughs> which is a great song. It is a Jim great Beth. song. <laughs> the video is even better. If you can watch on YouTube, it's ridiculous. But, I, um, early video. I can't yes, even I think watch. of what that video is, so I'm going to probably YouTube that it, later. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it looks like someone had a camera and they happened to pull over and they're like at the docks. So they're like, hey, let's shoot yeah. a video here. And they just they're, walk around the dock. They're like air instruments. And yeah. Like, yeah, it's pretty bad. They have their instruments. <laughs> yeah, they don't have their instruments. They're just it's walking all... around. There's like crates on the side and like, it's just so weird. That's amazing. Yeah. I'm from San Francisco yeah. originally and so Journey's from San Francisco. <laughs> so like every time you go to a Giants game, like Steve Perry may or may not be there yeah. and like they play... Um, they play. Uh, don't stop believing. Yeah, don't there stop believing. Um, every every game, and if he's there, he like runs down, like basically runs down because he his his uh, season tickets are like up on the in the box, so he like runs down to make sure the camera can get him and he's on the big <laughs> screen like singing. <laughs> so we're like, oh, there's Steve. <clears throat> like it's just a thing. But admittedly, I think when I was designing Miles, I was constantly listening to Post Malone, <laughs> Sunflower Song from the soundtrack. Yeah, yeah. it was just oh. crazy. Yeah, which. That was a really cool cosplay I saw at Emerald City Comic Con. Someone was a sunflower and they had like a, a Bluetooth speaker that was playing nice. sunflower the whole time. And I was like, that's that's a cosplay. That's really clever. Yeah. Um, wow. So we've covered a whole lot of stuff. And the one thing that I have to ask is mm -hmm. you kind of mentioned Designer Con a little bit earlier, but do you attend conventions and where can folks find you? Um, Usually the only convention I do is Designer Con. Oh, okay. It, it's just funny because when it's Designer Con started, it was in Pasadena. Yeah. So in the in like... Pasadena. Yeah, the convention center. Yeah. So I would literally drive down the street and oh. then I would do it. <laughs> so I was like, oh, easy. Um, now that it's gone to Anaheim, I did it last year. I think I'll do it again this year. I mean, you know, just because I love Designer Con. Mm -hmm. um, but that's usually the only convention I do. Oh. Uh, but all the other conventions, I'll usually walk around like, you know, San Diego. I've never, I've never been to WonderCon though. WonderCon's cool. Yeah. It's San I felt because it's the same company that does San Diego, so I'm like, oh, it's San Diego's like little sister. <laughs> like it, that's what it is. It's like you, you know, it's just a little bit, little bit wasn't the first born just child, yeah. so it's not all high strong. I check it out. It's yeah, just kind of calm down. It's right down. in Anaheim too. Yeah, right? it's right yeah. in Anaheim. Yeah. yeah, it was just this past weekend. Yeah. 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 It was really fun. Besides that, they can find me on social media. Yeah, it's right there at the bottom at Tracy Tabera. Right. Yeah. The other way. There you go. There you go. Right there. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. You guys, this has been an excellent show. Tracy, thank you so much thank for joining for us. It was me. so much fun thank to have you. you. Um, yay, shoe twins for life. So we're bonded that way. You guys, thank you guys so much for watching. We had a lot of excellent stuff on the show, including the Captain America premium format figure. We showed you the Iron Studios DC mini figure or DC mini hero collectible figures. Then we also had an unruly segment. We got a little bit, we got, we made people nervous with, um, with our shoe five, <laughs> that, that definitely happened. Um, and then again, one, thank you so much, Tracy, for joining Thanks us for on the me. show. Thank you guys for watching. We'll be back next, uh, next Tuesday with Sideshow and Tell, and then um, next Wednesday with Sideshow Live. Thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to let your geek sideshow. Bye guys. <laughs>